Hey everybody, uh, time for a bit of a hobby progress update. I've actually done some stuff this week. As you can see, it's primarily been rebasing these guys. Um, so I got the bases done, and I decided to go with green on the base rims because that's the same color I use on their on this unit's straps. Is the Caliban Dark Angel slash Dark Angels green? So that's what I went with here. So I got all the boys rebased, the rockets rebased, and two knobs. And I still have to dig up the big shooters and re and rebase the three big shooters for this unit because all my boys units have. 27 boys, three rockets, three big or 26 or 27 boys. This one has 27 um, instead of 26 for some reason. I got an extra boy in here. It might have been so I could run it without a knob in the previous editions where you had to pay for it. I think that's what it was. This was a unit I built I could run without a knob. So that's where the extra boy comes from. So I had run no knob and three weapons in previous editions where the knob cost points. Anyway. So every this you know, unit, every unit has 26 boys, three rockets, three big shooters, and two knobs, one with a claw and one with a big chopper. So that is um, 34 models per unit. This one has 35 because of the extra shooter boy in here. Uh, so I have to go dig up the other three and, uh, big shooters for this unit and rebase them too. So yeah, and then, oh yeah, and then I'm going to add, take three of them and add uh, tank buster bombs to the model somewhere. Probably just use these guys here and just glue it onto that spot in the back. So, yeah, so I've been rebasing these guys. They're pretty much ready to go. I only run 15 of them right now anyway, so I don't really need the... I'm fine with where I'm at. I did know, that, find out that they're not very strong. The gluing to the bases, to the clay base by itself, didn't work very well, at least on top of the paint. So I'll have to figure out something else to do in the future. Um, and this unit will probably have to be re-glued very often. So this, these guys are ready for tournament play which is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to elevate my freebooters list a little bit where it's more tournament friendly. Um, let me show, and I'll tell you what else I did for that here in a minute, so I'll be right back. Okay, so the second part in getting ready for tournament play was going through my grots and doing a base rim color on different units to distinguish them on the tabletop. As you can see, so you got tan, blue, red, green, and black rims. So when I display them, I can is more because I usually display them in, or deploy them in blobs next to each other. So it's going to help me. It's going to help my opponent. And it's something that really needs to be done for tournament play to distinguish. You have to be able to distinguish units from each other. And base rims is a great way for orcs because we really don't have any like consistent like shoulder pads for marines or helmets for Eldar or anything like that to help distinguish units. So base rims are probably is one of the best ways to do it. So I went through, each unit has a mix of shooty guys, close combat guys, and support guys. So like there's um, this guy here with no weapons at all from one of the mech gun kits. And somewhere in here I've got my two Cromlech resin ones. I don't know which ones those are. That's how well they blend in. I don't even know which ones they are. I have a couple Forge World ammo runts. So this is the Forge World guy. This is the Forge World guy. I still have some Forge World grots on sprue. I haven't done anything with. I might go back and get those. Because I have exactly 52 regular grots. Which may not be enough. I don't know where this guy's from. This might be the Cromlick one. Which is why he's the only one with a drill. Oops. Oh, I've got ammo, more ammo vents. So yeah, there's just a mix of guys in here. Oh, I think this is one of them. The wrench. So, yeah. So, again, this is going to make tournament play a lot easier. So I got these 50, which are all done up with different base colors. And I got one extra... Uh, Grot Euler, which goes with the shock attack gun guy for his ablative wound. And I also have a Grot Orderly, an old metal one. One extra Grot, just in case I lose one somewhere along the way. And of course I have my Cromlech uh, Grot General. Which is used mostly for kill team. Because he definitely looks like a Grot leader. <laughs> So yeah, those are that's my grot collection. I'm gonna have to go dig out those the last few of the 
Forge World guys, I have to see what's there. And then we have uh, these guys ready to go. Well, of course, this means I don't have any actual grot models for my mech guns. That's the one thing I'm thinking of, but I don't really have time or resources to come up with 24 more grots for the four mech guns I've got. So I just deploy them as if they're there and just ignore them. So I don't like to bunch the guns together. I spread them out and make sure there's room for, there would be room for models if I had them. I might just use tokens. I've got all those extra 25 millimeter bases. I could just put bases around it and say those are the grot models. The meaningless grot models for now. That might not be a bad idea. But anyway, so that's what I've done to get my freebooters list ready for the tournament. The My custom vehicles are pretty clear. I did a lot of work to make sure the weapons on those vehicles are representative of what's on the actual models. So like the scrap jets have wingtip missiles. <laughs> that's, that's how I distinguish the scrap jets and why I chose those UFOs for those in the in this first place because they have wingtip missiles on them. And you can see wingtip missiles, scrap jets, and there's this rocket cannon. Don't have a nose drill though, but I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, there we go. So this list is tournament ready, and because I'm thinking about there's a tournament on my game store on September 28th, I'm thinking about trying to make it to that one. Um, it's just hard to do with Saturdays being so busy with kid stuff, but um, because my free booted list is doing pretty good, I have to admit. I don't necessarily like this list because it's all shooty and it's just the same as any other meta list, it's just shooting you off the table. But it's orcs, and it's so completely unexpected. When I can do, when an orc army can do 22 wounds to Castellan in one turn of shooting, of shooting, you know, there's a lot of armies, not an orc armies, that can't do that kind of damage <laughs> to a knight so easily. So, there we go. Um, Freeboot is pretty much ready for the tournament scene if I decide to do that. So, any questions, let me know. If you want to see a copy of my current list, I'll put a link for that in from my blog in the description below, too, to see why I'm running 50 Grots. I'm running Grots now, just basically as CP farms. That's what they are. And so they, that's their primary purpose is CP farms, but they're also, of course, Grot shields, especially against snipers for, this, for the shock attack gun. That's a gr I cannot state how important it is that you have Grots in front of your souped-up shaka for a grot shield. There's, there's going to be a lot more snipers coming on with the new Space Marine stuff, so you're going to see snipers a lot more often. So grot shielding your souped-up shaka is going to be a very important use of, com of command points. And of course, I also do have my weird boy with the jump, so late game, I will jump a unit of grots onto an objective, or at least try to, right? Roll the dice. So that's their other purpose. So there's three distinct purposes for grots, and they do each job incredibly well. So. Um, more grots might be the something I have to pick up in the future. But for now, I've got the 50 grots I need to complete my um, tournament army. And now they're much more playable in a tournament setting. So anyway, any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.